So hello, welcome to Switzerland, welcome back to the channel and welcome to our first episode of Ultimate Car Caves. Now, our channel partner Equus, who builds some of the most beautiful houses, equestrian facilities, garages, watch rooms, cigar rooms, whatever asset class that you are passionate about, these guys construct it all around the world. And they've set me the challenge of trying to find some of the best examples across the planet. Now today, we are here in Lucerne, Switzerland. And what is behind this remarkable building is going to melt your mind. Truly, I've had the honor over the years of being invited into some of the most incredible buildings and incredible car collections, but I'm not exaggerating that this is the best I've ever seen. Okay, so welcome to Garage here in Lucerne, Switzerland. Now, prepare your monitors, put this on a big screen. This place is unbelievable. And we're about to meet Kim, who's gonna tell us all about this remarkable place, both from an architecture point of view, a car collection point of view, uh, the cars which they have for sale here. When we had the recce earlier, I thought it was fascinating that it was introduced in a way that there's nothing normal here, which gives you a phenomenal insight into the caliber of the cars which are in this building. So. Let's show you around. How's it going? Thanks, good, and you? Mate, honestly, I was just saying, we did the recce here last month sometime. Yes, last month you were. And we had like a one hour to just look around. I was like, we have to come back here. I just really want to say, first of all, thank you so much. You are welcome. For allowing us to film here, because I'm aware, obviously, it's not everyone who could just walk in here. But tell me more about it, because it's like half a private collection, half sale, right? Exactly, so up here, we have our uh, sales uh, department. Okay. Uh, this area is dedicated to a Koenigsegg. Uh, we wanted to have like the feeling when you come here, you enter a bit of Sweden and uh, really feel the spirit of, of Koenigsegg. So here You've we have really a, special stuff here. The, the most special, yes. <laughs> the most special. <laughs> so am I right in thinking this is, this is like ground zero car, right? This is ground zero. It's a chassis number two. It's the first customer car. And number one, chassis number one would be the prototype, which is uh, standing somewhere in the, in the museum. So this is ground zero as it can get. Man, you know, I would have given my right arm for this about 18 <laughs> months ago because we filmed a series with Codexeg called The Chronicles of Codexeg. Yeah. And the furthest we were able to go back was an early uh, CCR. You know, we were trying to find one of these. I never even thought I'd see chassis two, which is kind of chassis one, right? It is, yeah. Really. I mean, so you've had this for some time now? Yeah, I mean, we owned this since whew, 2008. And how often is it being used? Are you able to use it or do you just keep it Oh, you use it three, three times a year, I would say. Yeah. A lot of uh, car events like SOC and, uh, and other uh, Koenigsegg owners tour, we also drive it. So every opportunity we get to uh, meet uh, crazy people, uh, we, we bring this car. That's out. so Absolutely. great. You know, every time I see an early car, the design language that's flown through, yeah. it's kept very yeah. similar, hasn't it? From I mean, now you can one. see the very aggressive Agera RS in comparison, but sure. still the lines, the services are still, it's still there. It's all there, isn't it? Do you know what? As part of that series, we, we drove one-to-one, Regera, Agera, there's something about the manual early Koenigseggs that for yeah. me felt like this beautiful sweet spot, yeah. you know? So what this thing must be like is just a dream, right? It is, and there's a quite difference between CCR and uh, CCAS actually. Right. Here you're like laying down, you feel like driving Miami Vice yeah. style car, it's, uh, it's pretty cool. You should try it. I'd love to try it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if that's okay, I'll hold you to that because if, yeah. as soon as someone says you should try it, <laughs> we'll try it. <laughs> wow. Absolutely awesome. <laughs> so, super cool. In here then, some of these are, are owned as the collection and others are actually for sale. Yes, so okay. this one is for example, uh, not for sale. Right, okay. Um, this one was for sale, but okay. uh, not any longer. This is, I'm not sure if the camera's picking this up. This is exposed silver carbon. Exactly, it is uh, one of two Trivitas. Uh, so the other one is in the US and this is the carbon that has been whitened and then still clear. It's actually still like, I've only ever seen it on the inside of a car. It's like yeah. a gesture on a wheel or something. Yeah. I've never seen a complete exposed silver carbon. Yeah. You know what Trivita stands for? No. It's a Swedish for the three whites. Okay. So it's a silver, a diamond and a diamond dust in the clear coat. And then uh, in the interior, you have the other white details. So that explains why it's extra shiny. So it's got diamond dust in the clear coat itself. Exactly. 
Wow. Okay, so that one's sold. That one is okay. unfortunately sold, yes. This one's sold. But it's amazing seeing such early cars here. Yeah, we just uh, purchased uh, this car okay. uh, for one of our special projects that we are not allowed to talk about yet. Sounds good. But uh, this one is going <laughs> to be uh, going to be released in a year time. Uh, okay. A little bit different. One of the things which will unfold as part of this journey is the amount of work that these guys do in-house. That in, its, in itself, I mean, you could have just that facility and it would be incredible. How many floors is this place over? So the whole building is uh, five floors, uh, which of uh, garage is uh, using three in, in complete. Five floors? Yes. Okay, what's the total floor space as it were? Uh, if you have here, 5,500 square meters ish. Uh, so massive. each level is about a thousand square meters of, of cars. So, I mean, I'm actually, as, this is quite a rare thing. Normally we'll go to a garage and it'll be all about the cars, right? Yeah. But the architecture here and the, the design of it, how long did it take to build this place? So we had about two years of planning and uh, to make everything perfect. And okay. it took only one year to build it. It went as soon as everything was planned okay, out, right, it was, wow. was perfect, but we had to put a lot of effort into the, into the planning. I'm sure. So it spent more time on paper being drawn up than it did actually Absolutely. being built. Absolutely, yes. You mentioned that everything had to be literally set in stone because you've got low hanging concrete ceilings here. Exactly. And all of the lights now, that's it. They're, all, they're all fixed no, in place. We can add uh, mount some extra lights or something. This is it. <laughs> but it's a solid no. concrete floor, so <laughs> exactly. that's it. No more lights. <laughs> <laughs> what is... I find fascinating about Codexec, even though they're, every car is based on a certain mm. model, Agera, Regera, whatever, Every one of them seems to have their own story, be it client journey or purpose, little bespoke upgrades. Absolutely. Yeah, what's the story on this? Because this doesn't look standard. No, this is uh, <laughs> actually a special uh, story. Uh, this is chassis number 77. It's the first Agera ever built. It was the Agera prototype. Then it was the first Agera R, which is then um, developed from the prototype. And then it was the first Agera RS. So it's always been the prototype of the next evolution of the Agera. And then to the final stage, Koenigsegg said, OK, we can sell this car right. and uh, sold it to, to, uh, to a customer um, as he wanted it. So it has the full Agera RS outside spec, uh -huh. but uh, it has the one special thing. This one has a trunk. Like you can see the no outlets uh, here. Yeah. Usually on the one-to-one, -one, this uh -huh. is the only one-to-one -one that says this ones. Yes. There's usually a big carbon top where the heat comes through and everything. Uh -huh. This one only has the looks, but you still have I see. the space for, for luggage. Okay, wow. So, man, you've got some heroes in here. Like, you've got some real history in oh, there, yeah. right? We, so that in itself, that's developed three different cars on yes, one chassis. Yes. It's, it's bonkers, bro. You've got like, your own Kodisek Museum here. It's <laughs> phenomenal. It's, it's a small museum, exactly. One of the things I find as well, you know, you, you can look at all of the photos you want online. Mm -hmm. You're scrolling past Instagram and you say, oh, Kodisek, nice. When you're stood in front of one, man, they're just, it's it's the detail. Yeah. Yeah. I, I get goosebumps talking about them. <laughs> They're just incredible. But just look at, I mean, the detail in these lamps. And you can bespoke spec everything. Even the headlights in there, you can have uh, polished aluminum, you could have uh, black uh, anodized aluminum. Yeah. If you wanted to, you can, can have it in gold. If you want. Why not, <laughs> huh? This is such a cliche question, but because every codex egg is different, what horsepower is this now? Because obviously when it started, it was a different story. Yeah. So this one is a little bit special. Uh, it had had the RS engine uh, as it was developed as an RS. Uh -huh. So back then it had 1,360 horsepower, but uh, now it has the Agera R with okay. a little bit extra, so it's yes. 1,200 about. They're able to run fl flex fuel. And it is able jazz. to uh, run flex fuel, yeah. What a thing. You actually live here as well, right? I live upstairs, yeah. I'm, I'm a broke This guy is yeah. living the dream. <laughs> so, I mean, I think you're living what I probably imagined Someone asked me when I was like learning to drive, what's the dream? Oh, yeah. oh I want to have the most baller garage and <laughs> live above it. This guy. <laughs> so cool. So also then you must have been taking orders then. So you were taking orders for Yesco, Cabrera. Yes. Man, we were at the factory a few weeks back. Honestly, as a brand, the excitement level is just taking a jet yeah, curve. I really so. enjoyed your video. So. Thanks very much. <laughs> Cheers. Yeah, no, it was fascinating that they really opened up and you know yeah. shared things with us so it's really cool so th this whole section then i see you've got the yeah, timeline here. we also got the whole timeline of uh, koenigsegg yeah. uh, each achievement each car each upgrade uh, they've done funny enough here yeah. if you look at 2002 yes that's um the cc8s which uh, you can this is you're this kidding car. wow so six, six examples 
six examples, okay. which of only four has uh, survived, unfortunately, because right. they've been rebuilt or upgraded okay. to CCRs. I see. And the okay. other two. Right. So uh, there's four left, and uh, three of them are here. So You're kidding. That's you why I didn't get one. <laughs> there's four left, and there's three in this building. Exactly. So I don't know if I can set any better context as to how special <laughs> this place is, but that pretty much sums it up. So this place is custom built, right? This was never an existing thing. No, this was built after our specs, what we wanted, what we uh, think we're going to need in the future. Okay. Um, we could need a little bit more space by now, but uh, really? the other way, right? Look at this here. Do you know what is quite cool is, I mean, you know, halfway through this building, there's not too much windows, but the light that... Yeah cascades through it. Exactly, that was the plan. So we have the atrium, we call it. Yes. So the atrium gives light to all levels. As far as display pieces go, <laughs> that's up there. Yeah. So in a minute, you might be able to see a sneak peek of some actual James Bond cars down there. There's a CX-75, the, what I guess you would class as a DB10. It's a DB10, You yeah. know, a, these are actual film cars. These are the actual film cars. We have, we'll see those shortly. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see those shortly, but uh, as far as a sort of uh, sneak peek goes, that's awesome. So you've got team working here, offices, Yeah, everything. we have offices, meeting rooms. Okay, nice. As an event space as well, this must be awesome. Yeah, we have had yeah. some uh, actually car reveals. It's uh, good to mention it. Yeah. You can uh, see it right here already. It's uh, easy little Volta revealed uh, their uh, car here. So first time was shown to public was here at Garage. Was that here? Yeah, it was here. So you guys are an official dealer? Yeah. yeah. Wow. So this is a fascinating brand. We're we going back to the 70s, are we? 60s. 60s, yeah. Wow, okay. They've reborn. They're reborn together with uh, Andreas Zagato, the designer for the Zagatos of, uh, of the new Vanquish Zagatos. If there's anyone that knows something about Zagatos, this man <laughs> right here, right? I mean, just look over here. This is a percentage of what's in this building. We'll touch on those shortly, but so interestingly then, this is built actually on an American car, right? Exactly, on a Corvette, Corvette C6. Which unlike most, well, Zagato products now at least, you might expect it on a 599 or an F12 or something. But Absolutely. Wow. But uh, actually, funny enough, the uh, Zagato's wife okay. is uh, the inheritance of the brand Isolo Volta, and they wanted together okay. to make a car. And so uh, Zagato went in and said, I designed the car, and it's your heritage brand. So this was what they developed together. Dude, the paint on this 177, what a machine. They're special, aren't they? Yeah, I love it. The sound is... Yeah. Just amazing. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so as far as Zagatos go, you've got a few. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. Where did the love for, for this brand start for you guys? Because as we work our way through, you'll yeah. notice a distinct yeah. Zagato theme here. The first time actually uh, I saw a Zagato in real life, I think I was 16. Okay. I saw an Aston Martin DB7 Zagato uh, yes. with yeah. the uh, bubble, um, bubble roof. roof. Yeah. And that was just amazing. And then we have always been into Aston Martin, and then Aston Martin kind of yeah, continued with their lawful relationship with Zagato and brought us these uh, cars. So Absolutely outstanding. So I'm going to probably pick out two of the more significant cars. It seems to be from the comments section online, people gravitate towards the shooting brake, which okay. I think is a fantastic yeah. thing. Yeah. This is no ordinary shooting brake, is it? No. It, uh, above the <laughs> Villa Desta package you can get, it also has one of the few full machined aluminum front grills. So this, this launched on this car, this is the actual launch car, isn't this it? This is the launch car, this is the Segato that has been around the world. So this is the pre-production prototype. Exactly. Um, and so this, obviously we can't really convey this on camera, but this is a cold to touch, milled from a single piece of aluminum grill. Exactly. I mean, it's unbelievable. The significance of that is pretty much every other one is plastic, right? Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, but this is, I mean, it's beautiful and it's almost got a sort of, um, it's like a diamond turned grill, yeah. isn't it, right? I mean, if you look at it, it has a setas. That's what it, uh, the design is of, so to really show Segato. It's so cool, dude. Yeah. So you have the actual Villa Deste car. This is the Villa Deste car, exactly. Yeah, down here, Aston Martin pre-production Zagato Villa Deste. <laughs> So everywhere, every square foot of this place, you've got some sort of significant history, special car. We are only specialized in special things. That's, <laughs> that's what we do. That's so cool, <laughs> so cool. So funny enough, you can, you can go like, if you think this is special, yes. there's 99 cars of this one. Yes. But here's actually only 19 cars. 19? Yes. Crikey. So, 
And you can only right. buy it together with the DB4. I was going to say, so these came as a package, didn't yeah. they? If you were yeah. having the DB4 continuation, exactly. this was kind of you got this one part of the deal. With it, yeah. <laughs> this one thrown in. Yeah. So. <laughs> Interesting, actually, that one of the special features of that car is its grille. I don't think a grille gets any more special than this one. Uh, no, absolutely not. I mean, I've never seen a grille you can see moving. It's unbelievable. But effectively, all of these veins articulate and close. Get up close, it looks like a sort of porcupine hedgehog you yeah. know, grille. All of these close and open. 19 of these. 19. It's three of them. And you have three here? Yes. Like, <laughs> Unbelievable place. You're also an official dealer for Singer. Yeah, we have a partnership with the Singer and uh, made the uh, homologation for Singer in, in Switzerland. What's the sort of basic process that you guys had to go through to tick the boxes for, oh, for the approval? homologation? Yeah. Oh, it was everything. It was from uh, width of the tires, from body work because it's uh, wider, it's made in carbon. Uh, okay. The engine is, has more performance, it's more loud. It's there's a, a lot of boxes on and on and ticked, on. Yeah. So everything is brand new, leather covered, engine bay. You know what's great about the older Porsches is the size of them. Oh, yeah. I mean, if you, if you put yeah. a, like, a 992 next to this, it looks like an SUV. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it does. It's so yeah. compact. Yeah. Is that a 2.7? Yeah, it's an original RS. Uh, you, the most RS have a, a rollover cage in the, in the rear. Yes. But, uh, this one is um, touring. Touring, exactly. Yeah, it's full cool original, though. full restored. For me, this is what I think the 991 or 2 Touring should have had to differentiate it from a GT3. Because exactly. really, a, a GT3 Touring is a GT3 with no wing. Yeah. It doesn't tour any better. No, no. Right? But this, you're you got back seats, so yeah. at least it's a proposition of a different yeah. use case. Anyway. This is an amazing car, also to That's drive. A stunning thing, isn't yeah. it? So I'm guessing, so because you've purpose built this place, you've got plug sockets along for trickle charging everything. Each car has its own plug for charging and each car has its private charger. So it's got a charger allocated specifically for each car? Yes, right now we are, are working on a, on a new thing. Okay. I've, I bought an engraving machine, so each charger will be in future engraved for the specific car, so you cannot mix up anything anymore. That's really nice. As we have Great here sure. about 75 cars, we need to <laughs> keep track of the, the sure chargers, so. right? <laughs> <laughs> wow, <laughs> what a problem to yeah. have. <laughs> I know this is a really small detail, but I'd love to film the... It's basically engraved. It's a huge uh, engraving machine. Okay. Uh, and then it cuts into the, to the wood and makes a three-dimensional... Details like this, I, I know it seems a small deal, but from over there, it could have been a print, right? It could but when you get up on it and you see this depth to it, I just think it speaks volumes to the quality of it. A print would for, for sure have been easier, so... Yeah, that's not the point, is it? <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> exactly, that's why this place is so awesome. I think it's worth it, absolutely. Well, Makes it's a, difference. a representation of the vehicles exactly. that are in here, you yeah. know? If they printed a badge on that, it wouldn't be the same, no. same thing. So I'm guessing that's a car lift. That's the car lift. We can take that one. Let's take the car lift. <laughs> so even though we can drive outside yes. to yes. each level around uh -huh. the building, yeah. we still have a car lift in case it's raining. Sure. You have to remove a car or yeah. maybe cars momentarily not driving, so then uh -huh. we can so moving between the levels. You live here? Yes. That, that, that to me, is still <laughs> yeah. the coolest bit. <laughs> Unfortunately, they, live, they start here, it should have gone all the way up. <laughs> yeah, to bring a car in to your apartment exactly. would have been amazing. Yeah. So. What was the biggest challenge in building it? Was it planning or was it, you know, like planning regs? I don't know what it's like yeah, in, in I put in a lot of planning time into the, uh, into the workshop. Right. So the workshop okay. is living up to all the specifications and, and okay. yeah, having everything nice and clean. Yeah. And uh, yeah, obviously also the security of the of the building is of course, uh, yeah. quite important. So you can't go anywhere without a code. Oh, well, you can't have all of that under your roof and just have a open door. I suppose. No, exactly. You, know. you guys are also often working on secret projects, right? Yeah, you we know? have a, a few, uh, yeah. few secrets which we like to share on a later point. Sure. Then. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Crikey, look at this place, man. Wow, so the Zagato theme continues heavily. Here is our Zagato love. It's a little cave of, of Good Lord. basically any Zagato of Aston Martin you can find. <laughs> so cool. <laughs> so these are the garage doors yes. to outside. So you can just okay. take any car despite they also parked like this, nothing in the middle, so you can just So any drive out. level it's on, they can still drive out. Exactly. Wow, oh, mate. And Brilliant. 
quite many of these cars are also, are also used. You can see in, yes. in Switzerland, you can have uh, several cars uh -huh. on a one license plate. So you can just take it off and put really? it on the next car. I didn't know that. Yeah, it's uh, easy. You just uh, take it off. <laughs> I had no idea. And uh, go to the next car. And, so you uh, can stick that on a, yeah, exactly. a different car? Exactly. Every car that's, uh, that's licensed. Though. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So that's a great idea. What? Why don't we do that? <laughs> that's, a great, that's a great idea. And you only have to pay for the most expensive. Okay, right. Yeah. So this is your second one? Yeah, that's the second one. Okay. And so you've got an AMR theme here then, right? We got a big AMR the theme BMR, going on here. The, yeah. yeah. So this in contrast to the previous Vanquish Zagatos, yes. this is running the new DBS engine. This is a uh, DBS engine plus a little bit more bit power more and a little, a little bit, bit louder. Yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> So the general thing is the gatos tend to sound better, right? Yeah, quite a bit. You can uh, rev it, right? <laughs> oh, it sounds way better. <laughs> oh, damn. That's a different ball game. It's a different car. It's a different car. <laughs> okay, so why don't they make DBS sound like that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a special thing. They, they didn't joke when they said AMR line. It's like no, they really went on. for it. They really went for it. Also, the carbon fiber mid tunnel in oh, man, so in mad carbon is yeah. But in the back is it for to travel? Sucks? I drove from here to uh, from here to St. Gallen. Okay, in the back. Yeah. Not cool. Not gonna do that again. <laughs> Not <laughs> cool. <laughs> yeah, this is a uh, chameleon brown leather, so it actually has a little green surface uh, edge. Really? And uh, also gold, so it's like fits to the champagne color. Yes. Yeah, I think they were cool. they had back then planned to build a hundred cars. Yes. They turned out to only build twenty five. And it's amazing driving. It has a set of gearbox. Yeah. I think top speed. I, I drove three thirty in this car. Seriously. So each level has uh, its own box of keys where we store the, the keys in the safe. Okay. Is that a continuation? That's the continuation which comes together with the DBS cigarettes we just looked at. In a million years, you'd never think that was built like two years ago, would you? No. They I mean, also it's... did a lot of effort. You can just see it on the seats because uh, they, sure. are, they are FRI uh, yes. approved, so you could actually go classic racing with this car. I mean, isn't that great? That's awesome. I mean, even in these things, the smell of, I don't know how they've achieved that, but the smell of these things inside still smells old. <laughs> it's yeah. a funny one. What a thing. Yeah, it's stunning, huh? Whoa, man. This place is like Disneyland for petrol. Like, it's just <laughs> insane. It's uh, incredible fast for, for what is it, it is. Yeah. I suppose these cars were so light, weren't they? Yeah. They, they didn't were, have to yeah. adhere to any of the rules and regs which we've got no. now. And then just really light aluminum uh, yeah. body and. Yeah. And this floor, is it a, what sort of finish is this? It's like a polished it's, uh, stone? It's actually uh, something that's been, it's an old style. Okay. Uh, if I'm right, it's called terrazzo. Uh, okay. So it's a concrete uh, mixed with the color and different stones. Mm -hmm. And then they machine everything down. Sounds like a small job. Just, just tiny. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, because all of these stones have a flat face on them. Exactly. So, so when uh, you spill oil or anything on it, it doesn't soak in. And you don't have any tiles, you don't have any seams, you don't have issues with cleaning. So obviously old cars, they do leak, leak occasionally. Some, yeah. some, sometimes, right? Yeah. So we can just wipe it off and it's gone. So it's an oil resistant floor. Yes. So you don't have to have those bits of cardboard stuck into your car like, like most garages yeah, do. Yeah, exactly. This one talks to detention to detail. It's so good. <laughs> I love it. Nerding out. And then we have a lot of uh, access points. So okay. when we should have cars standing in the middle, uh -huh. we can Okay, plug, so you can just plug and charge those in yeah. the center as well. Exactly. How much fun did you have designing this place? Quite I mean, a bit. It's, yeah. I mean, it's just amazing. <laughs> but uh, all my heart, I mean, this was, you did this once on level four, then you can copy uh -huh. on, on level uh, three. Okay. But all my heart went into level two to yes. our workshop. Right. Was, yeah, that's a really a special place. Yeah. And I would imagine from, so from a security slash insurance point of view, do you have to have a, a special sort of like, uh, you know, fire extinguisher system or anything like that? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we have a quite good insurance, but you can see between uh -huh. each light, there's basically a, a 
smoke detector. What? You're not joking. You, no, yeah, there actually is. There actually is. So, uh, every like seven feet, there's, yeah, a, there's so a smoke. We'll, there's detector. nothing happening here without it being noticed. <laughs> and uh, the fire alarm is directly connected to the, uh, what's right. called in English, the uh, fire brigade? Fire brigade, yeah. exactly. So, wow. And uh, this is the uh, James Bond car, you know, with the, uh, the Gold 25 edition. cars. Gold uh, edition. Yeah. You so see the guns good. are out. It's so cool, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, look at it. So, when we're on Bond cars already, then. Uh -huh. uh, we have the DB10 standing behind us. But that's the actual DB10. That is the actual DB10, because the movie car. There are a few variations of them, right? So, as Martin Dow back then built 10 cars. Okay. Eight of them were destroyed during the filming. Right. This one and the one in Aston Martin, Gaiden, is, is, uh, is left. So, you have the actual DB10 and the actual CX75. Exactly. Even uh, Daniel Craig has signed uh, inside the car of, uh, of the DB10. I do enjoy the way the, the current Vantage looks, but they nailed it with that. Yeah, they should have. They should have taken a bit more from that yeah. car. It yeah. just sits so proportionally right, yeah. you know? But if you look at the fenders and the front hood and everything, it uh -huh. is there, but it's just... Oh, it's there, yeah. Not went all the way through. I mean, I can kind of see why some of this didn't make production. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, the intricacy of the, the instrument cluster. Yeah, so different to, uh, so to what different. it actually is now. Gear shift is cool. Mm -hmm. That got a little... Flick up. Yeah, it has I a flick up, flick. yeah. I, I gotta flick this. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, look at that, eject. This might be the coolest car in here. <laughs> <laughs> it's full on. This like, is the prototype. full on stunt car, I would call it. Yeah, there's a full on hydraulic camera. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you have to be a pretty good driver to dare to sure. fully rip that one. Yeah. And it looks like it's got a fairly long wheelbase, huh? Yeah. It's a V6. Uh, back then, okay. uh, actually, the idea was to make a V6 with the electric uh, help and so on, but yes. uh, as they decided not to build this car, unfortunately. They should have made this. Yeah. They should have made this. There's only a normal V6 in it. And I think really every brand needs some flagship halo car, because it does yeah. wonders for filtering down aspiration and excitement. Exactly. Right? And it still looks amazing now. Yeah. So yeah. tell me that's the party bar, is that? Is that, that is the party that's bar. That's the party yes. bar. Yes. All right. Where did your guy's symbol come from? Uh, actually, it's... Um, it's from Lucerne, the city we are in. Okay. Um, they used to have this uh, lion head as uh, the city symbol, so we thought why okay, nice. not grabbing that up and ah, that's a cool story. And doing that. Wow, fantastic! Have, so for doing car we've had a few, uh, a few good parties. I here. bet you have. Yeah. And there's uh, some driving in, involved. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where we are, I mean, your Alps is on the doorstep. Oh yeah, this is our house mountain, Pilatus. So you've got amazing mountain biking. Yeah. Uh, great roads, yeah. albeit the, rest the restrictions are a bit tight. Um, great skiing. It's, it's a good place to be, man. Yeah. It's a good place to I be. I enjoy it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yes, dude. <laughs> you have a stove in here. Yeah, it's a, it's a party thing. You know, Why not? If someone is getting a little hunger, then... Why not? Absolutely. I love that you've been able to create something bespoke from a blank sheet of paper. Like, that doesn't often happen to a scale like this. Normally, mm. if someone's doing a garage, they might adopt an existing building and, you know, change yeah. some things. But to do it from a blank canvas is literally the dream. Thank you. We, it's we well did done, the best. Mate, honestly. Yeah. It's really, Thanks. it's fantastic. <laughs> Just seeing it is really, really cool. This is where this place gets really interesting because, and I know that's a ridiculous comment considering what we've just seen over the last 10 minutes, <laughs> <laughs> but the history with you guys and racing, particularly Aston, is significant. Yes. Right. The Aston and Martin love has been going on for, been for a long time. It's been a good uh, rendezvous. You guys were heavily involved in, in effectively running the Aston Martin WEC team. Yes. So uh, we actually started a long time before a WEC. If you remember okay. the GT1. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. see, uh, yeah, GT1 World Endurance Championship. The best series was. ever. <laughs> exactly. One hour sprint race. The best, uh, the best. Yeah. Best cars ever. Okay. That's, that's where we really got uh, involved. And uh, we had uh, two cars uh, running, uh, running that series. Do you and still have any anywhere? Have you got any? Yes. We so have you got some GT1s yes, somewhere. We have uh, some hidden away, some GT1s. Yeah, which man, are that's so cool. Amazing. Just there last summer, we, yes. we cranked it again. It was wow. brutal. Oh man, that, that is actually holy grail. Like yeah. that's, that's it, right? That's, that's super special yeah. stuff. For me to stand in front of this car, I mean, I follow WEC, try and do Le Mans every year. Yeah. Um, to see this just casually sitting here is magic. This is a special car. It's yeah. actually, the most winning uh, Aston Martin ever. Uh, also due to the time it has been running because it was all the way from 2012 to 2017. Long, long stint. Really long time long for, uh, for a race car where they haven't like, been allowed to, to develop or 
that much to a, to a new car. Um, so this one has a one a Limor and and also actually the whole uh, VEC uh, in his uh, in his class. So here you can also see we have a special uh, print that's basically all the racers who have been oh, winning cool uh, with this uh, car. There's quite some people on there. A lot of memories with this yeah. one. Yeah, that's for sure. You know, there's one thing having. A, a nice or a special car, but there's something entirely unique about something which holds history, yeah. right? Bond so, so cars. We, uh, we keep the GT1 uh, with, the, oh, with yeah. that history. Hell it's... yeah, man. Look at that. Look at this. I yeah. love this. Wow. <laughs> Tell me this was your first car. <laughs> uh, I wish it's going to be my nephew's first car. <laughs> wow. Look at it. I've caught something out of the corner of my eye here, and I'm not afraid to admit, I have no idea what that is. It looks like an Aston. Yeah. <laughs> It is a, a very special Aston. Okay. It, uh, it never reached to, uh, to production. Uh, the designer, Hendrik Fisker, uh, offered to uh, make a design and chose to so Fis do it by himself. Basically. Fisker is in Fisker, Karma Fisker. Exactly. You can also see the, the shapes in the front and uh, you can see it here and there. It actually pushes out some design details of the Fisker. But uh, in cooperation with Fisker, and then we developed this car mm -hmm. and um, launched it to Aston Martin. But unfortunately, back then they already had the DB11 design done, so we were just okay. too late to to show them this. So this is built on a DB9. It's platform. a DB9, uh, DB9 platform, a new interior, a new body. Uh, it's uh, seven centimeters uh, longer than the DB9. Okay. Is this a road legal car or completely prototype? This is a uh, road legal in Germany. I, I managed uh, that, um, but uh, Switzerland is uh, a little bit more hardcore when it comes to the, to the rules. So as a kid, yes. I uh, joined Le Mans almost every time I could. Yes. And uh, back then they still handed out these. Uh, then I got assigned by the, all the drivers that, uh, that were driving and, and I thought it would be a good spot to hang them here. What fantastic stories are. So some of them have been winning and others are just good. I don't, you know, what, when they had I don't the, know what that is, but it's cool. This is um, part of the delivery of the continuation. You get all this with the car. You get some spare parts, some tools. I think You're exhaust, kidding. what you need. What you need, just bring it in yeah. a big sexy trunk. Look at it. Uh, this is for the uh, Segato. And uh, you can hear, okay. see for the DB4 GT, you get a whole, uh, whole two no box. Way. So uh, Look everything. Like this. <sighs> and then uh, just, just pure your... garage porn. Yes, and then it says DB4 GT on each oh, single come tool. Off. No. <laughs> Look at that. And it's all snap on. It's all snap on. Got the little badge in here. Yeah. It's, uh, and uh, also a few, I remember right, there's a few, you see, it. it's, they didn't get it. It's like everywhere. <laughs> Some spare parts being in there, exactly. What is that? You've got a DB4 GT drip tray. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you need, right? Crikey. I mean, again, you know, the significance of detail, I think. Yeah. I, would, I, I bet most owners are as proud to show that as they yeah. are the car. <laughs> They're like, come check this out. Come check out my spanner set. <laughs> so all of this down lighting is, all of this as well was pre-engineered, pre-thought about. It was everything set up before the building had started to, right. to build. So you knew that obviously on most walls you were going to show something. Yeah. So you wanted to integrate have, some downlighting. And uh, if you don't want it, you can always turn it off, right? Sure. So. Yeah, yeah. And the charger plugs uh -huh. everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah, we've got a few. Yeah. A few trophies uh, along the time. And uh, of course, the Le Mans 24 hours trophies. I mean, of course, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a real 24 hour trophy. That is the Holy shit, we cannot get more real than this, yeah. Can I hold that? Of course, go ahead. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> this is probably, unless I play my cards really, really right, this is probably never going to happen, but <laughs> I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll, I'll pick it up from the, the base here. Yeah, that feels good. <laughs> <laughs> that is so cool. You guys have to be proud, but it's really, oh, yeah. really, honestly, yeah. well done. It's just exceptional. So lots of doors here, lots of lights, lots, lots of security. Features. You can control this on your phone. Everything is controlled from my phone. I mean, why wouldn't you, right? Exactly. <laughs> security, <laughs> alarms, doors, gates, exactly. whatever you want. Really? Can so you can open the gates, open doors. Open everything from, from all over the place. Wow. 
Welcome to Switzerland. Well, exactly. <laughs> Being in the back cave, you forget that you're on the footstep of the Alps. So this road then, this runs and you can access every level, every level as it can works be its way down. From, from outside, yes. It's the bat cave, dude. Look at it. Yeah, golden bat cave. Yes, ultimate <laughs> bat cave. Look at it. So I'm assuming you had all of this cladding bespoke made. Uh, the color is bespoke made. We right. can get uh, this uh, this okay. outside, but done right. in gold. Okay, done in gold. It's very Zagato grill esque. Yeah. Funnily enough. Yeah. Okay. It is. <laughs> <laughs> Never thought about that. Very nice. Wow. Well. And if you want to, you can also come here with the heli and land on the field. So you have clients landing here. Yes. How cool is that? This gives you a feel of. Because from up there, you can't really appreciate the depth of the place. No, you only see the entrance and then... So this is the service and garage section. Yeah, the workshop, yeah. And then underground, you have an extra Extra level well. for heavy duty machines and... Storage uh, and things. Yeah. Are we allowed to film in there? Yeah, of course. Because that for me, as, this is going to sound ridiculous. That's almost the most exciting, unique bit of the building. For me, it is as well. It's the like <laughs> USP, right? Yeah. I mean, there's, there's, there's collections and yeah. then there's this level. You need to service your collection. Wouldn't be complete without an office dog. No, you, you need an office dog, right? Yeah, you, you gotta have an office dog. Hey, dude. <laughs> he also loves the Alps, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Look at this. Right, so weirdly then, but this is crazy to say it, this is where the magic happens. This is the pure magic. This is a special room. <laughs> okay, not because there's a code that's and a singer, but kind of because of what's around there, right? I, I mean, I would never corner. normally put my back to that lineup of cars, but considering what we've just seen, I think the only, I mean, you know, an AMR signet's cool, yeah. <laughs> but this, look, behold this space. The fact that you have this on site blows my mind. Yeah, we want to give the customer uh, the optimal experience in any car, especially the Koenigsegg. So the workshop has to be up to spec to be able to make a great service. So, I mean, when I came here last time, yeah. last month, I recognized faces from the Koenigsegg factory here. Yeah, you do. <laughs> <laughs> All okay. our employees have uh, Koenigsegg experience, um, have been working there for several years, and then I hired yes. them. <laughs> Mate, unbelievable. So you have full engineering ability, you've got CNC on site, yes. you can do carbon work, yep. uh, you've got carbon partners as well, if you want to do more substantial stuff, you can exactly. outsource too. So you're re rebuilding engines, creating your own components, yeah. mods. Yeah. All I mean, we have a great help from Koenigsegg with all their special software and everything. Sure. But there's uh, nothing we can't do in-house. Including servicing a yeah, Vulcan. Vulcan. Yeah, I mean, they also need service, right? They do. <laughs> they do need a service. Just a very surreal environment. You know, it's like I've just stepped into Gran Turismo or yeah. something. <laughs> you know? Yeah, Gran Turismo totally. workshop. Yeah, it really is. Phenomenal. I guess it goes without saying, this was part of the plan from this day one. You, you always knew you needed a workshop yes. here. This is planned from day one. That's also why all the lifts for Koenigsegg and everything, not even Koenigsegg themselves have this. I have these uh, special Koenigsegg lifts, which are then um, okay. really holding on, on the platform. So this supports the, the flat of the tub. Exactly. Rather that is than special for, for Koenigsegg. Uh, specifically but, for them? Yeah. But oh, the Koenigsegg really don't have them. The floor as well. Yeah, they don't have that. They are sorry, just like five centimeters over the floor. But and you know that annoys Christian. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> you just know he's a little yeah. looking at this going. So this is this is a flat lift. Yes. And, it, and the beautiful thing, again, on the attention, it recesses flat, flush Absolutely. with the floor once yes. it's down. And the color of the lift is also is the color of the floor. No. So on the surface of the lift is this? Yeah, not completely, but, but it uh, sort of blends in. It blends in. You can see it on the, the Regera, it's... Uh, oh yeah, yeah. It blends in. So we're not going to touch on this yet. But, not yet. Uh, Later, next time you're later, here, hopefully but, you can... Uh, just glance at that and we'll talk about that soon. <laughs> but uh, I think as well, you know, the f when that eventually comes out, yeah. a lot of context as yeah. to just how much you're able to achieve here. That is also why we are kind of partnered up with Koenigsegg to do this at all. Sure. It's really to show the world what garage can do. So uh, this car had uh, pressure, uh, oil pressure problems. Mm -hmm. um, so now we took off the uh, engine uh, mod pan and then uh, changed uh, the uh, valve for that. This must be really good feeling to have to, you're almost like a self-sustaining car ecosystem here. Right? Yeah, yeah. Wheel alignment, tire fitting? Yes. 
this is it's a full set. Like you don't have to leave here, dude. No, no, no. <laughs> it's it's the full I, show. I almost never do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> full alignment setup. Yeah. You can put so your also usually on. these machines they come yeah. in uh, in red and in different colors. But right. as I knew from the beginning that we're gonna build this, yes, I ordered these ones in special colors so they all fit into the workshop. Well, what is this here? This is a uh, suction. So you see the doors back there. You can open them up. And then a big trolley comes, so you can suck uh, exhaust uh, fumes out. This thing? Yes. No. Really? Yeah. And then... And they're in there? They're in there, you can just... Uh, it's, it's quite nicely made. No way. So you roll that out, and that is an extractor. Then you can uh, roll your big hose <laughs> next to the car, <laughs> and extract the, uh, the extract exhaust fumes. The exhaust fumes out? Yeah. Dude, honestly, <laughs> man, I'm just, and I'm loving this. this each, is so uh, it's not very visible, but uh, each uh, workplace uh -huh. has its own button, so you can uh, turn it off from each uh, workplace. Wow. So th these are now allocated specifically here? Yes, uh, not, uh, so in this bay. Each, each bay has, uh, has its own, or two at least. And then uh, you have also the oil button, so it pressurizes the oil, which comes directly out of, uh, out of level two, uh, level one, sorry. So you've got your own oil vat, Bowser yeah, somewhere, exactly. storing oil, and you yes. just go Yeah, you have a gun, they hang there on the wall, and uh, or back there as well, and then hey, comes dude, the gun. Most, most brands don't have this. Like, you know, no. <laughs> <laughs> hilarious. Oh, look, so the external theme the runs through the internal. Yeah. Exactly, the, and yeah. uh, the difference to uh, this level and the others, you can see here we have the concrete ceiling again. Oh, but yeah. for working, we need something that is less uh, noisy. Because right. concrete and okay. concrete is like bouncing the sound quite a lot. Yes. So we have special uh, sound yeah, isolation uh, behind oh, yeah, the you can see the, the foam yes. exactly. padding in there. So we have a nice uh, work environment. But you've, you've got an official Aston work desk here. Yeah, I'm not official uh, Aston Martin dealer, no. uh, but uh, I will call myself an Aston Martin specialist then, sure. I guess. It's the next thing. So this will effectively connect to HQ, will it? Yeah, and uh, to connect to cars, and uh, yeah. I can get spare parts, and I mean, we have quite I mean, a few. Yeah. Left, so. I mean, yeah, boy, yeah, exactly. <laughs> we yeah, need that. That's it. So all, I mean, you've got Ethernet ports all yes, plugged and, in uh, throughout. Yes, inbuilt computers. Inbuilt computers? Yeah, so okay. the, each uh, workbench also has its own computer. I mean, this, this uh -huh. side is special made for Koenigsegg. We have the lifts and everything. Uh -huh. But uh, also for the new Regera, the hybrid, we have our, yes. our own workshop charger. I love how they've got an official badge on the charger, yeah. it's nice. So uh, each workstation has its own computer where it can work on. And uh, we have the iPad, which also controls the whole building. But also here we can go into uh, each charger, which is uh, up in the ceiling. So, so each car has its own, or each work bay has its own charger. And you can see the status of, uh, no way. of I the car. I, I didn't know C-Tech was so, but yeah. they've got an integrated app. It's, uh, it's something new that just came up with. So you can see here now it says one hour and uh, charging with 14.2 volts. It's just brilliant. It's brilliant. It's really inspiring, actually. I love uh, one of the gadgets nobody ever sees because nobody cares. Okay. But uh, as you're into it, I can show yeah, you. Yeah, I care about it. <laughs> it's great. So uh, not only we have the oil out of the pipelines, but also okay. the oil disposal. Okay. Because used you, oil you can extract always, as well. Yeah, it's always messy and everything, but yes. uh, a lot of workshops can extract into the, into their okay. oil canister, which yes. is like this one. Yes. But uh, we can not only extract it, we can also pump it down to or a level below in a you huge have a tank. waste bag. Exactly. So now it's just pumping the used oil down. I mean, you really have thought about everything, hey? I have. And so when you were doing this build, did you get advice from people who had spent time in workshops to go, do you know what would be great? Is ah. it we had this? Or did you just... No, no I've been working in, in different uh, workshops. Okay. Right. And uh, also, oh, why don't you do this better? Why didn't you do this? And then I was like, I had the chance to do everything like I wanted to. So, so from all of your experience working in different workshops, you've gone, you know what was a pain in the ass when I was yeah. there? It was this. <laughs> yeah. Wouldn't it be great if we had that? And you just went, boom. Everything in. Build it in. Yes. These have found their own like sort of niche cult status, yeah. these cars. Yeah. People seem to yeah. really Have like you seen them, the yeah. uh, VR, uh, V8 uh, transformation yeah. there? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> bonkers. I mean, there's short wheelbases and then there's that. Yeah. And what it must be like with a V8 in it is terrifying, I'm sure. So I, I nerd out on stuff like this that I've, I've always dreamt of. And I don't know why I, I like the idea of it, but an indoor wash bay. I always I hated love this. I love this. Dirty cars in a workshop? Yeah. That, that doesn't work for me. For sure. They have to be clean when you work on them. So uh -huh. first thing that happens, car comes yeah, in here, straight in. wash, 
and then on the lift. Oh, you got a full curtain. It's basically a full big shower. Yes, <laughs> big shower. exactly. You just have a full curtain. There you go. And we have uh, yeah. air extraction, so it doesn't yeah. get so moisty. So this is extraction for yes. moisture in here. Yes. Dude, it's so next level. I thought it was pretty cool to make it. Like it is pretty cool. It is really cool. Full yeah. save. I love it. I mean, small things as well, where there's less cabling going around yeah. the floor. So yeah. when you're yeah, moving around it, I'm dragging it across bonnets yeah. or tires. It spins all the way well, around. It spins around, so. yeah. So, so you can, can work your way around doesn't the circumference. Matter where you, are, you always have the, uh, I mean, I watched the cast quite a few times, I always have it like the pipe behind me so then I can't scratch the, uh, the car, right? It is brilliant. I, I don't know. Actually, at this point, I'd like to hear from the audience because, I mean, I'd talk to you about coat pegs if I could. I'm just fascinated yeah. about, you know, every little detail, but I'd love to know at this point if, let us know how nerdy <laughs> would you like us to go. <laughs> so obviously, it, I mean, it's amazing that you can take care of your own cars, but this is a fully operational garage. Like if, if a customer wants some, some work done, service, et cetera, yeah. that is also its Yeah, or purpose. if somebody can't supply and we have sure. to do it ourselves, then we also yeah. do that, yeah. And uh, for okay. that purpose, we yes. have this, uh, these all machines, and this is one of them. We have a water jet cutter, so it's cut oh, with water pressure and dude. sand. I've always wanted to see one of these things. Every now and again, you'll scroll th through Instagram and you'll see a real close-up of the jet yeah, exactly. cutting out. Yeah. I always thought they were huge. They are usually huge. This oh, is they? a okay. special a desktop water jet. It can only cut a certain size, but uh, okay. still, no, it's a little bit rusty. We so cut you a lot of pierce pieces. steel with water? Yes. That blows my mind a bit, actually. It's, uh... And then uh, we uh, bend it. We have a bending machine back there. A bending machine? And then uh, we have a welder, and okay. uh, he, uh, he welds uh, the whole bracket together, so we can make all crazy designs and so it's not just ABC servicing here. You can bes you can create bespoke yeah, things. Yeah, and then you can see the trolleys. Each uh, uh -huh. workstation has its own uh, trolley where all the spare parts or car parts are, are stored on, and then you can write down what you have to do or what's left to do, and you can I store. I see. So it's each a, a literally a work board. Exactly, and then the job specs. Usually we have a little map for the car where the uh -huh. key can be in, and then the. Uh, screws and everything are stored in here so all small parts don't get lost. Man, this is, I mean, it's, it's OCD dream here. You know? it's, <laughs> it's, uh, it just makes you feel good seeing it all. You know? it's, it's really, really cool. You've got your own wiring loom board here. Does that yeah, suggest that you do like harnesses and things? I do harnesses and cable repairs, whatever's cried, especially on, on the older cars. I've, I've done whole harnesses, door harnesses and everything. Because really? It's just so shit made back then. So yeah. just like, oh. Let's just do it again. <laughs> just one more time. <laughs> sure. Yeah, yeah. So, so I made this uh, rack by myself uh, when okay. we started here. I yes. thought I really searched the internet for something cool, but that wasn't anything. No. So you so thought that's gonna it. Gonna do it myself. Absolutely. <laughs> it looks great. I don't understand anything about looms, but it looks good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. You still oh. have a little dream for fabricators. If uh, if you have keeps any going. viewers who are fabricators, come on, let's look. Oh, this is no joke. Oh, so you really engineer things, like you're not even playing around here. No, you no, no, really we... engineer on site. Yeah. So we have this uh, huge uh, welding table, which is extra long, so we could uh, weld uh, whole extra systems uh, for special projects or smaller brackets. We have even done a subframe uh, here. Have you? Yeah. Yeah. For our little electric uh, yeah. program we've Project. done. Uh, yeah. Done the whole subframe. So you have team and they just work it here per project? Uh, no, uh, so uh, all my mechanics are trained by me for these machines. Uh, I've been instructed on each machine, I've been working with each machine, and I show my mechanics how to, how to use them. So the more I'm understanding this is you are the brainchild, really, behind all of this. Like, this is your baby, right? For sure, on level two, a workshop here, this is all, yeah. all my child. That's... Dude, like I said, you never got to leave. <laughs> you just build cars all day here. <laughs> <laughs> this is the dressing room for the employees. So even the, the wallpaper is a uh, full Koenigsegg uh, engine split. Look at that. You, you, have a f you have a flat lay of a Koenigsegg engine in the washroom. Yes. Yeah, that, I think that takes, That's what you need, that, right? that takes the prize for Baller Toilet Award, <laughs> I'm sure. And then right. this one shows the, uh, the uh, engine and the other one shows the uh, chassis. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, he's not joking. No. He's not joking at all. <laughs> <laughs> so each vessel has his own theme, but everything is uh, Koenigsegg related. 
I, I can't thank you enough. You're welcome. Really, and it's great to have you here. Congratulations on this place. It is truly mind-blowing. I'm hoping the lens has done this place <laughs> justice because to be here, the feeling of it is remarkable. Now, what's topping off this whole experience? Um, the one car which evaded us as part of the Chronicles of Codex Egg series was this. Um, and this is chassis two, which technically is kind of chassis one. It is. So this is the ground zero, kind of where Koenigsegg began. And uh, Kim has very kindly uh, allowed me to take it for a drive. So uh, tune in next time <laughs> because we're going to immerse you in what a early Koenigsegg's like. Thanks again, Mayor. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.